So why would anyone want to privatize water? Let's talk about it. Privately owned water utilities were common in Europe, the US, and Latin America in the mid and late 19th century. Their importance gradually faded away until the early 20th century as they proved unable to expand access and publicly owned utilities became stronger. A second global dawn of private water utilities came in the early 1990s in the aftermath of the Thatcher privatization in England and Wales, the fall of communism and the ensuing global emphasis on free market policies. The World Bank and the International Monetary Fund played an important role in this process through the conditionality of their lending. So broadly speaking, there are two forms of private sector participation, water supply and sanitation. In a full privatization, assets are permanently sold to a private investor. In a public-private partnership, owners of assets remains public and only certain functions are delegated to a private company for a specific period. Full privatization of water supply and sanitation is an exception today, being limited to England, Chile, and some cities in the US. Public-private partnerships PPPs, are the most common form of private sector participation in water supply and sanitation today. The four most common forms of PPPs in order of increasing responsibility for the private partners are a management contract, under which the private operator is only responsible for running the system, in exchange for a fee that is to some extent performance related. Investment is financed and carried out by the public sector. The duration is typically four to seven years. Then there's a lease contract, under which assets are leased to the private operator who receives a share of revenues. It thus typically bears a higher commercial risk than under a management contract. Investment is fully or mostly financed and carried out by the public sector. The duration is typically 10 to 15 years. Then there's a mixed ownership company in which a private investor takes a minority share in a water company with full management responsibility vested in the private partner. And lastly, a concession under which the private operator is responsible for running the entire system. Investment is mostly or fully financed and carried out by the private operator. The duration is typically 20 to 30 years. Concessions are the most common form of PPPs in water supply and sanitation. They are followed by leases, most commonly used in France and West Africa. Management contracts are used in Saudi Arabia, Algeria, and Armenia, among others. Mixed ownership companies are most common in Spain, Colombia, and Mexico. The motives for water privatization vary from one case to another, and they often determine which mode of privatization is chosen. Management and lease contracts are used to increase efficiency and improve service quality, while asset sales and concessions primarily aim to reduce the financial burden or to expand access. Ideological motives and external influences also play a role, with market liberal ideology favoring privatization, left-leaning ideologies opposing, and both conservatives and centrists falling in between, often based on local and business-minded considerations. Usually, several of the above motives are combined. So let's talk about increasing efficiency and improving service quality. Water privatization is seen by some as a solution to improving poorly managed public water utility systems. Symptoms of poor management can include low water bill collection, high water losses, and intermittent water supply, sometimes lasting only for a few hours a day or a few days per week. In Algeria, Saudi Arabia, Colombia, and Cuba, increasing efficiency and improving service quality were principal motives for water privatization. In these cases, the argument to privatize water is predicted on the belief that by adopting a market-based approach to the management of water, the service provider will be incentivized by profit to increase efficiency and improve service quality. Some critics argue that this belief is misguided because the water utility sector is typically monopolized by one private company. They claim that this counteracts many of the advantages associated with the market economy because without competition between multiple water service businesses, there's nothing to drive prices down and levels of efficiency up. Then there's external influences. External influences such as the World Bank and the IMF often play a role in decisions of governments to privatize water, as was the case in Bolivia and other African countries. This influence may take the form of structural adjustment programs, whereby a development loan is given on the condition that the receiving country privatize their water utility system. Other aid agencies have also supported water privatization. Critics claim that these external influences are problematic and argue that influencing water privatization is part of a broader movement of Western powers imposing neoliberalism on countries in the global south. And then lastly, there's fiscal motives. In some cases where access is already universal and service quality is good, fiscal motives dominate, as is the case with Berlin and in Chile. In Berlin, the state government sold a 49.9% share of its water utility in 1999 for 1.69 billion euros in exchange for a guaranteed profit for the private shareholders accounting to the interest rate on 10-year government bonds plus 2%, as specified in a contract that was kept confidential until the state government was forced by a referendum to make it public. As a result, tariffs increased by 15%, and the state government's revenue from the company declined compared to the situation before privatization. 
In Chile, where no water waste management plants existed prior to privatization, the government's desire to finance their construction off-budget drove privatization in 1998. Fiscal motives for water privatization are also common in countries where water access and service quality is poor. In cities with rapidly growing slums, it's very expensive for the government to expand their water utility system infrastructure at the pace of the growing population. Maintaining the good condition of old infrastructure is also expensive. Thus, if a significant portion of public funds is not allocated to maintenance, pipes and waste water treatment plants can fall into despair. For some countries, the cost of managing a public water utility system becomes unaffordable. In these cases, privatization can be seen as a possible solution for governments to attract national and international private investments. So what are your thoughts? Should water become privatized? If you like this video, hit that like button, consider subscribing. I talk about money and everything related to it, so don't miss out. And as always, take care of your money.